too, because I guess I can't operate a f***ing camera. This one has been in the works for a while. It's It's been a long time coming. This features actually the absolute first riff and some of the first material I ever wrote on uh, an eight-string guitar and what I would consider to be some of the most original out of the uh, the earliest stuff that I ever uh, tried to you know make into personalized music almost 10 years ago actually nine and a half uh, as of as of recording this so this stuff I think is important for me to get down and and move on from to be able to cultivate new ideas and stuff that uh, I'm excited about working at in the future but um, this is one of those things that's been nagging at me to to get out there and I, I'm only just now perhaps confident enough and comfortable enough with what this is to uh, to actually see it through and I'm just now around the people and, and working with the people that I think are adequately bringing this kind of vision to life. You know, there's countless technical metal acts out there. There's thousands upon thousands of people just like me doing what they're doing in a spare bedroom. Uh, I'm not special. This music isn't going to, you know, blow the doors wide open of, of any metal subgenre, but it is important to me, even if I'm wearing some of my influences on my sleeve and uh, I don't feel particularly up to the task on some aspects of it. I feel like some of these um, themes and, and even the, the music itself has grown larger than me and it it needs a voice it needs a home and i just i need to get it out there before i'm comfortable doing anything else i was 16 years old when i got my first extended range guitar and it took a few months to become really comfortable with it but right off the bat there was something so inspiring so connected about this instrument um, that opened up a realm of possibilities that i never even cared about before and you know it's those same qualities that spawned the Cedar and Project and will spawn more songs and, and everything I do. And the first three songs on this album were all written within a year of me uh, getting that guitar. Now they've evolved, they've certainly grown and become more technical and I think much better songs at, at the core and, and that's certainly uh, a result of some of the people that's been involved in this, but at the core the songs were the songs. The, the structure was all there. The keys, the general framework of it was, was just kind of birthed right then and there. And so I've been holding on to these until I feel like, or at least I've currently felt like they were kind of ready to show off to the world. And I'm not, I'm not sure I'll ever reach a state with any of my music where I think they're really, truly ready. But like I said, I'm, I'm now to the point where I feel like I'm comfortable diving in the, in the deep end of the pool. And, you know, I got to gotta get it out there some way at some point or it's going to drive me fucking crazy. The name of the EP actually came about before the name of the project and I will continue to refer to Elatria as a project because it's hard to call a two-person act a band when they live several hundred miles apart across several state lines and uh, I physically cannot perform all of the, the things that I will be performing on album at the same time. But I initially wrote all this material either before or at the same time that I've written a lot of stuff that's going to be in separate projects and my idea for it was kind of either like an A-side and B-side with the heavier material and soft material, but it all be, you know, kind of cohesive in terms of the sound or just kind of sprinkle it all together. And the, the more I got into it, the more I realized like, oh, these things have their own separate identity and this needs to go in this bucket. And this needs to go in this bucket. One of them is Cedrum. One of them has turned into Elatria. One of them is, you know, well, several of them actually that uh, are neither of those things. But Calamitous Constructs has come about from the lyrical themes of the album. Um, every song dealing with a separate 
calamitous construct, things that are chaotic and that cause strife and grief in our lives, things that ultimately we fuel or have built ourselves, and that's kind of what the uh, the ultimate, I guess, message of it is, is it's, it's all our fault. <laughs> For the project name then, Elatria is a portmanteau of ill and Latria. Not exactly rocket science here, <laughs> but I think it fits because ill uh, being you know the modifier of opposite of or not, and Latria being Latin for uh, worship, especially you know Christianity, uh, kind of being a part of something bigger than oneself. You combine the two, and to me that means you know, self-worship or um, being holier than thou, seeing yourself as greater than everyone else doing the, the wrong things for the, the right reasons, or at least the ones that you see fit. And to me, that's like, that's exactly what this project is. It is so uh, masturbatory in that way. And, as, and so is everything that I guess a musician, if you want to call me that, of this class does. But um, between the lyrical themes and uh, the music I'm, I'm trying to convey here, it kind of stuck. I'm sure it'll become more obvious as this uh, video series plays out, but this is going to be quite the gorilla style recording session for both myself and for Mr. Paris Smith, who is involved in the drum side of things. and. Put it briefly, he has elevated this project to levels that I could have never done on my own, thanks to him already for the amount of work that he's put in. But I think, if nothing else, if you hate the music, that's fine. I hope what you get out of it is that uh, in this day and age, you can get across what you're trying to get across and hopefully have a good time doing it. And you don't need you know, a massive budget, you can you can do it on your own. And, and this is not going to be perfect. This is I'm not saying I'm, I'm a master of any of this stuff. But my goal is to ultimately create music that does hold up through a contemporary lens in terms of production and, and performance and uh, sound quality and, and writing, but also retain some of the energy of yesteryear where things weren't, you know, quite so perfect. And there's almost a garage band aspect of things where you can hear the string scrapes and uh, maybe I'm out of breath on the vocals at one point. If I had to put a bow on all of this, I guess I would say I'm a middle class, pasty white boy. You know, <laughs> my life's pretty damn good. I'm recording this album on the weekends and when I get home from work, and balancing that with some semblance of a some, something that looks like a social life in this fucking nightmare that we live in currently. But uh, this is, I guess, my, my re release valve. This is my safety valve. This is my vent the place where I can run off to, lose my composure for a bit, indulge in the uh, the aggression and the Neanderthal-like uh, primitive rage of it, but also stay organized. And, uh, and maybe that's what I, I like about it so much. Mm -hmm. 